Rye is um, a useful feed ingredient. The, one of the real benefits of hybrid rye and a challenge with traditional rye is ergot contamination and, and the nutritional value of the rye from an energy standpoint uh, is about 95% of corn. The digestible lysine uh, is about the same as corn. And so basically we used uh, corn soy diets. We replaced half the corn with hybrid rye. Thumbnail sketch is we couldn't really see any differences in pig performance. So the pigs perform quite well on the, on the rye. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Lee Johnston, a professor of animal science and extension specialist at the University of Minnesota. So Dr. Johnston, it's been a while since you've been on the show. So before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a brief introduction about yourself? Sure. Uh, it's nice to be back. Uh, basically, I grew up on a dairy farm in Western Pennsylvania. I did an undergrad degree at Penn State in animal science and went on to Texas Tech University for a master in swine nutrition and then finished up at Michigan State with Dr. Alan Miller in swine nutrition and management and was fortunate enough to come to the University of Minnesota right out of grad school. I've been here since 1988 working in swine nutrition and production and done some administration here to the center. But uh, now I'm spending time with pigs and graduate students and life's good. Gotcha. So with some of those grad students, I see you've been doing some work um, regarding organic pork production and hybrid rye. So could you tell us a little bit about everything that you have going on there? Sure. Well, basically, there's been quite a uh, increased interest from consumers in organic food products. And you go to the grocery store and you can find a lot of different organic uh, products. But when it comes to pig production, there's really not much uh, support or research being done in organic production systems. And so my colleague here at the West Central Research and Outreach Center, Yushi Lee, um, wrote a grant to USDA, and uh, we started to delve into the whole area of organic pig production. One of our first projects was to uh, call it a fact-finding mission. We visited uh, several organic farms across the upper Midwest, um, farms that producers were, were raising pigs organically and asked them what their challenges were. And two things that came out pretty loud and clear was parasite control is a real problem and uh, the high cost of certified organic feedstuffs. And so those were two problems or challenges that we could draw, uh, dial in on. And this project is focused on the feed costs. So we looked at uh, how could we try to help with feed costs because if one was to buy certified organic corn and soybean meal on the market, it's two to three, sometimes more times the cost of conventional corn or soybean meal. And that just costs are not necessarily always passed on to the consumer of that organic pork. So um, our idea was that uh, if we could find some way to raise those grains on the farm, then that might be a more cost-effective way for farmers. And about that time, uh, KWS, a uh, company has roots in Germany here in the U.S., was really promoting hybrid rye, uh, hybrid winter rye. And so that was something we thought, well, maybe we can incorporate rye into an organic production feeding system and we could get uh, some of the winter cover crop benefits, we could get the ability to cycle nutrients from the pig barn back to the cropland. And then this rye would generate grain, of course, to feed the pigs. And in organic systems, you need to have bedding. And that bedding is expensive as well. And so the straw, the rye straw, could be used as bedding. So you kind of get a double whammy in terms of benefit. So that's kind of the guts of the project that, that we proposed. And fortunately, USD funded it. And we had a couple of good graduate students uh, working on that project, uh, Megan Cavanaugh and um, Gabriella Lima. 
Giga Technologies manufactures Jestall Swine Precision Feeding Systems, designed by a family of pork producers for pork producers. The Jestall feeders are a simple, durable, and reliable solution, trusted by industry experts for all production stages. For 30 years now, Giga Technologies has been at the forefront of innovation, continuously enhancing sow nutrition and delivering remarkable outcomes for producers. Contact Giga Technologies specialists to learn more. Gotcha. So one question I have um, more about the, the farming aspect of hybrid rye. Um, and so you say this is a winter crop that's um, produced during the winter as a cover crop. So how does the the field cycle exactly work with hybrid rye? Is it just in between a normal corn soybean uh, cycle of a farm and the nutrients there? How do we make sure that it, we're still not nutrient depleting the soil? Well, the way we managed it in this project was you you seed the rye in the fall, uh, September, late August, early September. Now, this isn't a, a pig nutritionist talking about agronomy, so you got to be a little yeah. careful <laughs> here, but uh, this is what we did. Um, seeded the rye, and of course, it came up, made uh, green cover over the winter, um, helped hold the soil, deep roots help infiltration. Um, then in the spring, of course, it comes back and then grows to maturity, harvest the rye about right now, um, late July, early August. And so then um, that early early harvest, then some of the farmers here in Minnesota are raising rye just so they have land for liquid manure applications so they can get ahead of the fall rush when corn comes off and soybeans and so forth. And so um, we harvested the rye and bailed the straw so then we're set for our next set of pigs that uh, we had programmed to start on the experiment um, say in october something like that gotcha okay that makes sense and then one other or another question i had is um so i'm a little less familiar with organic side of pork production um and you mentioned a few things such as bedding but could you give us a little bit of background on what kind of criteria would need to be met for pig production to be considered organic yeah. Um, first of all, before I forget, uh, our students, Meg and Gabriella, recorded a YouTube video that folks can find on our YouTube channel at West Central Research and Outreach Center and just look for the organic pig production, I think is what it's titled. Uh, they've got uh, some tips there for, for transitioning into organic production. But some of the, the key uh, aspects of organic production um, it needs to be certified, so the National Organic Program Standards, so there's certification agencies one needs to contract with to uh, ensure that you meet the standards. And those standards require that there's no use of antibiotics, uh, either subtherapeutic or as therapeutic. So if a pig is, is sick and doesn't respond to organically approved treatments, they need to be treated with an antibiotic and then pulled out of the marketing stream for organics because they, they can't have antibiotics ever. Um, pigs need to have uh, access to outdoors. And so we raised our pigs in hoop barns and the hoop barn doesn't qualify as outdoors. So we had to make a, a pen outside the hoop barn so that basically the, the thumb rule is that you, the pigs got to be able to look up and see sky. And so that's what uh, we made pens for that. The pigs that were raised as certified organic, the, the dams, their dams needed to be fed organic feed and managed organically from the last trimester of, of pregnancy. And then those progeny can be raised organically and sold as certified organic pork. Um, they need to have bedding, um, no access to um, synthetic materials. So our hoop barns had... Um, Penta treated lumber on the bottom of uh, the sidewalls. So we had to line those with something so the pigs wouldn't have access to that. Um, in terms of feed ingredients, they all need to be certified organic um, for the grains and natural stuff. There are some exceptions for some additives that you need to go through your certifying agency, but our premixes were all certified organic, uh, no synthetic amino acids. Uh, can be used. And so there's a variety of limitations that tend to drive up costs. And so that was one of the motivations for our study. Gotcha. Yeah. with <laughs> That's that's quite a few limitations that definitely would 
increase the cost by quite a bit. So I can understand the importance of needing to decrease feed costs. Um, so from this study that you kind of looked at, what were some of the, the preliminary findings when using this hybrid rye? Well, the hybrid rye is um, a useful feed ingredient. The, one of the real benefits of hybrid rye and a challenge with traditional rye is ergot contamination. And that's probably why it didn't get as much of attention historically because of those um, mycotoxin challenges. But hybrid rye uh, pollinates in a very intense period. And so the, the contamination with ergot is very low. Um, so we didn't have any problem with ergot. And the nutritional value of the rye from an energy standpoint uh, is about 95% of corn. The digestible lysine uh, SID lysine content uh, is about the same as corn. And so basically we used uh, corn soy diets. We replaced half the corn with hybrid rye. And uh, Gabriella, our student, is I think going to be on the podcast here in the future and give you more details. But in a thumbnail sketches, we couldn't really see any differences in pig performance. So the pigs performed quite well on the, on the rye. If we went to higher levels, maybe we'd see a little bit more penalty in terms of uh, growth efficiency. Uh, the quality of the pork was good. Um, pig performance was really good. So it seemed like it was a viable thing. And depending on the crop year and how well uh, the yields were and so forth, we were able to save between $2 and $22 a pig by our calculations. Uh, in feed costs or in total costs of production. So, um, yeah, so it seems like there might be some benefits there. Gotcha. Well, I'll definitely be looking forward to that recording we have in the future with some of your students to get some more uh, specifics there. But I think that's all the time we have. So thank you, Dr. Johnson, for coming on the show and sharing all your research with us. Thanks for having us and um, look forward to crossing paths in the future sometime. Absolutely. And everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week.